Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Today we'll be taking a look at the Transformers Collectors Club exclusive R.I.D. 2001 Scourge. Alrighty, so here we have the figure starting off in vehicle mode. Why am I starting off in vehicle mode? Because getting this thing into vehicle mode is so finicky and such a pain in the ass that I'm starting in vehicle mode. Even now it's not too perfect because it's just a pain in the ass. Like In vehicle mode it does look good, but it can't really roll that well. And even if it does, there's a high chance that you'll scratch this part right here since it hangs so low, so scarily low, and this is a collector's figure, not a regular retail release figure, so you don't want to do that. But anyway, like, vehicle-wise, it, it does actually look pretty good. Like, you know, you've got some nice clear red headlights, uh, nice clear red for the windows, although I think a layer might, or something might be cracking on mine, because... Not sure if you can see it in person, or you can see it in person, but I don't know how well you can see it in video, especially since my fucking camera doesn't want to focus. But it looks like there's a layer underneath that's cracking a bit, but it's not on the outside. And you might be wondering why these side windows are opaque rather than clear. Well, that's because these actually have a matrix of leadership detail on the inside that is able to be seen, but not very well, especially on camera. But uh, he's definitely he's definitely nice, you know. He's a bit more of a charcoal gray, not necessarily wholly black. But he's got a lot of nice nice teal pinstriping. And the teal details will definitely get a lot nicer in robot mode. Strangely enough, even though this is an American Collectors Club exclusive, it's got the symbol for the Japanese Decepticons from Robots in Disguise 2001 or Car Robots. Because... In Japan, the original figure this is based off of, which is the Generation 2 Laser Optimus Prime mold, never went to Japan during the regular Generation 2 time, so in the early 2000s, Japan decided to make a show with a couple of new figures, but a lot of them being repaints and re-releases of Generation 2 Transformers figures into the Japanese market for the first time, and the original mold for this guy, which is Laser Optimus Prime, ended up becoming a half clone of him that was evil which is why he looked like Optimus Prime in the show in Japan he was called Black Convoy because that's what all the evil black repaints of Optimus Prime are but in America because Hasbro had weird licensing problems with names they decided to call him Scourge because the license for Scourge was starting to run up I guess but yeah he looks good, he looks fine, he, he looks like the vehicle he should be. Now anyway, starting with the transformation. Starting off, I'm gonna lift this up. That way we can free the legs, pop them open, take out the sword, we'll move that to the side. Then we're gonna move these four panels in order to make the inner leg detailing. Then we're gonna move these wheels, because they go in and set in place that way they aren't as out but they are pains in the ass to move and sometimes they don't want to go in but it seems right now I'm in a bit of luck because they actually feel like going in next we're gonna wanna lower these parts of the back of it then unplug the left foot so that we've got the legs all set up and ready to go. Next for the arms, we're gonna wanna move this out, fold this up, do the same to the other side, or just fold that up first and move it out. Then we're gonna wanna separate the arms, bring this all the way down, and straighten it out. Do that for both sides. Then we're gonna wanna the head's in here, so you're gonna, what I do is I push the head up and flip it out, then push in the windows to make that oh-so-hard-to-see matrix of leadership detail, which I'll finish transforming to see if we can't get any better. Double-check, make sure the arms are down all the way. Bring the chest forward, 
and it looks like it's catching on something, but then lower it down. Then we're just gonna lower the head. Then lastly for the robot, we're going to bring these inward. So robot's done. Next we're gonna have to transform your sword, which isn't that much, which is just folding this out and bringing down the cross guard, which is another piece that's a pain, but it's not too hard to get it. And now just sticking his hand in. Yeah, there's robot mode for Scourge. Which this time, there's definitely a lot more teal, but that's not from the truck mode. Like, you got some up here. Nice trim of teal around the shoulder part. You got some clear red in his bicep and some more teal here. And yeah, all around, I just love how this figure looks, especially for the more villainous Optimus Primes, which we'll get into that for comparisons, which let's see if I can adjust the lighting a little bit. I don't know, that makes it look worse. But yeah, overall, this guy just looks fantastic, and he was made back in the day when they used light piping, so pretty much that means if I can get this damn camera to focus, there we go. So pretty much that means that the back of their heads are clear so that they can have clear plastic running through for the eyes so that when light hits them the right way it looks like they're glowing and yeah yeah I can't even see the matrix in person yeah there's no way in hell you're gonna be able to see that but yeah all around I love how this figure looks it it's almost better for a more villainous version of Optimus like Scourge, Nemesis, or like I'll show later, the Shattered Glass, and oh my god, this camera does not want to fucking focus. Yeah, so I guess that's everything detail-wise, since like I was saying, that's everything detail-wise, since there's not much on the back other than these wheels, a bit of the pinstriping from the vehicle mode, and a little backpack that was made from the truck. Anyway, I'm going to take the sword out of his hand so we can get into articulation, which honestly isn't too great, but with how cool the figure is, I don't care. So he's got a normal ball joint at the head, which means he can look 360. Looks down about that far, looks up about that far, so not that much. Has a little bit of tilt, and thanks to the transformation joint, you can get a bit more down and a bit more up, but that might be at the cost of looking a little bit funky. The arms, he can go 360, and they move out that far, which isn't a lot thanks to the hindrance of the massive shoulders, but the shoulders look cool either way. The shoulders themselves can move down that far, but that makes it look a bit weird. Then he's got a swivel at the upper bicep, then has a regular old hinge that gets just barely 90, which isn't great, not at all. And goes a little bit back thanks to the way it's molded. Then he's got a ball joint at the wrist and a hinge, which I think most of that has to do with swords holding, because it lets me get some really cool sword holding poses. Next, he's got a swivel at the waist, but it can't go all the way because of all the stuff on his back. He's got a ball joints at the hips, which gives him an okay spread. Let's him kick forward about that far, back about that far. Then, again, less than 90 at the knee, and that is mainly hindered by the wheels. You know what, I'm gonna try this. I'm gonna pull them out and try and get them out of the way of each other to see if I can't get a better, yeah, no. Even still, it's still hindered by these two spots, which are the details that we put in for inner thigh detail. So yeah, he's stuck with a less than 90. And he's got a hinge at his ankle so he can put his leg all the way up or that far down along with the ball joint which gets him pretty good uh, what's the word ankle tilt which gets him a pretty nice spread and then the ball joint is just all around ball jointy so yeah I mean it's an early tens transformer if not even earlier so posability makes sense that it's not that great since this was still at the time more of a children's line before I got into co more collector-oriented. 
or I guess the figure itself, because, or uh, not the figure, the mold, because this figure itself, this this colorway, is a collector's club exclusive. But the figure was made back when pretty much every Transformers line was geared towards kids and online subscriptions and convention exclusives were the collector's oriented figures. Nowadays, that's a bit different because now we've got the collector's lines for like generations and you've got the more kid oriented lines, which is whatever cartoon's on right now. But yeah, anyway. I'm going to put his sword back in his hand and compare him with a couple figures. As long as it'll focus, because... It's been not wanting to do that. So I'm going to start off with a figure that I mentioned earlier, which is... The Shattered Glass Optimus Prime, using the same mold. And this Shattered Glass Optimus Prime is just beautiful. I think I'll upload a video on him next, just because... I like him that much. Got to get that information out there even though almost nobody except for co-workers of all people watch my stuff. Anyway, move him off to the side. Bring in the bootleg of the first version of Shattered Glass Optimus Prime. Looks good and all, but he's very floppy and made out of brittle plastic. And next up we've got the Earthrise spoiler box Nemesis Prime, which in the story of the Netflix trilogy is Optimus Prime, which is a little bit weird because Nemesis is almost always a clone or some evil duplicate made in some way. And lastly, we've got the Armada Nemesis Prime, which here in this video it's a lot easier to tell that he's much more of a navy blue or grayish color rather than a black compared to him. Yeah, that's him with Armada Nemesis. And yeah, overall, even though this figure is limited in articulation, I can still get him into some pretty cool poses. And it's a the Scourge color scheme for this version of Optimus, so I absolutely love it. Like, for the longest time, I only thought of this as ever being Nemesis, but now I can't not think of him as Scourge. But yeah. He is a bit pricey on the aftermarket because he is an old Collector's Club exclusive, and they aren't doing Collector's Club anymore. Now for, like, exclusive colorways, it's more for, like, the Shattered Glass toy line, which I do want to get the new Shattered Glass Optimus and all those figures, mainly because all the convention exclusive ones are expensive as hell. Yeah, I think this guy I paid around, like, 84 which is about the average price I was seeing him go around. Now, the Takara Tomi Mall exclusive version of this Optimus it is a bit different, looks a little bit nicer, but is also worlds more expensive. So I figured I'd just get the Hasbro one. Because the Takara one, all this gray is a like more dark gunmetal gray. And these little like silver spots here around these blue circles are clear red. And it just looks great, but I like this one a bit better. Yeah, that was a little bit too rambly, but overall, I like this figure. If you want it, go ahead and hunt for it. Just don't overpay. If you like the video, go ahead and leave a like, comment, subscribe, do what you will, and I'll see you all next time.